But there's actually a great story, actually, it's about the, the, the railway line. Now, it's been suggested, and Lynn's going to have to back me up here, but, and, and Fiona is also to agree, it's been suggested that Yorkshire people are mean. And I don't know where that came from. I think it's a most undeserved. Undeserved. Um, or perhaps it's slightly undeserved. Um, Mick's, <laughs> Mick's laughing at that. And amongst the, the legions of meanness, farmers right at the top, right? If you want to find frugal, penny-pinching, go find a farmer. I don't know what this is. I'm just coming over to have a look. It's uh, something that's put in 2000, a bit of a sculpture. So I'll just uh, bring it up over here. So MM, of course. Two t- t- no northern people I mean absolutely we're generous in spirit if not necessarily in wealth and that's a good way of putting it so anyway there was a story of a chap um, who's known around this part as Headless Bert it's a great name right and uh, he was such a tightwad this guy it said right this is the story that he stole his dentures from a corpse which I think even by frugal standards is going some right most people would definitely kind of draw the line at, uh, <laughs> at removing some of his teeth from their, uh, from their, you know, I suppose he didn't need them anymore. I suppose you can put it that way, but not as recycling. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, I think for most of us, that is really a step too far in kind of frugality. But um, one thing he did like to do was he'd go for a pint. And every Friday, he'd walk up from his farmstead up the coast towards Whitby to uh, to go to the pub, the Windmill Inn. Uh, it's about a five-mile walk, and he would walk along the railway line so he could basically sort of find his way kind of direct. Um, and whatever money he had, he was going to spend it in the pub. So anyway, one night, goes to the pub, as usual, Friday night, has a few drinks, well, has a lot of drinks, actually. He's roaring drunk. And so he's walking home, he's stumbling, and he trips over a stone, right? And apparently... In falling forward, he spits his dentures out. So, of course, he's looking for his dentures now. But, uh, you know, he's drunk, it's dark, there's no lighting. He's kind of feeling around for him. And at some point, obviously, he's now flat down. The alcohol just takes over and uh, he falls asleep. It's a rather unfortunate place, as you'd imagine, to fall asleep. Because, predictably, when he does wake, it's with a train on top of him. So he obviously doesn't wait for long. And he loses his head. And it's said that the ghost of Headless Bert wanders the cinder track on Friday nights and that you can hear the chattering of his dentures as he walks along. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I kind of want it to be true. I like that story, so I thought I'd share that one with you as we walk down. So, uh, that's right. Right, so th- this is pretty cool, actually, over here. Um, I sort of have to I like, yeah, make fun a little bit about how mean Yorkshire people are, but I love the community spirit up here as well. And this next story I'm going to tell you is all about people working together and it is about a shipwreck or rather a sinking of a ship and the ship uh, was Liz have heard that story before wow never encountered headless birds on the railway line the ship is known as the visitor Emma quite common take two big ditch Emma you know far too much on this subject I don't know where <laughs> you picked up that knowledge but I'm going to take it that that's the case so this is the plaque of the rescue of the visitor and this happened, this story, on the 18th of January, 1881. So it runs ashore at um, Robin Hood's Bay. And, but unfortunately, this boat, right, there was no local boat that could be launched because of the storm. And so, basically, in order to save the crew, they needed a lifeboat. But the nearest lifeboat was over at Whitby. And of course, so, so it's in this bay here. Whitby, of course, is six miles away. So they decide, there was a headless bird in Harry Potter, so I think that's where they got the answer. I'm pretty sure there was, anyway. Um, but uh, certainly something along those lines. So what they decided to do was they have to bring the lifeboat six miles over land. The only trouble was there were seven foot snow drifts. It was in the middle of winter, it was the 18th of January in 1881. And so it took 200 people to clear the way. Have you? Was it good? meal in the cafe 200 men working together on this dark winter's night and they managed to manhandle and carry the boat six miles across the headland I'm just going to cross over and try not to get run over in the process it's a bit quieter than it was earlier but uh, none of this is still pretty oh good I'm glad you've got the map so that's good um, 
But as you're going to see as we walk down, this is a nice view actually for me, I'll just give us a second here. So as we walk down, the, uh, obviously it winds and it, it tapers and it goes in and out. Just, and so you have to demolish buildings, take out walls. There's like a wrecking crew going to, to clear a path. But eventually, remarkably, after only two hours, they'd got, after two hours of leaving the Whitby, they'd managed to get the boats. They launched it and they saved the visitor crew. And basically, everybody survived, which is, you know, a near miracle, isn't it? When you think, you know, how cold it would be for being exposed. But what a story of working together for the common good. That these maritime folk know that when the time comes, they want to know that others were pulled together to help save them. So there is this common understanding, a kind of shared moral code. A, uh, yeah, never give up. That's, that's a great way of putting it, Cheryl. You know, in adversity, that's where you find strength. It's where communities can find strength, isn't it? It's going to come together to kind of get the outcomes you're looking for. So, well, we're going to talk about the RNI a little bit later on because obviously what there wasn't at that time was a lifeboat at Robin Hood's Bay. So quite clearly, that certainly raised the question of do you think it would be a good idea for us to have a lifeboat here 